Here we go then. So it's eight key questions that any property investor should ask a property sourcer. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, and these are some of the, you know, the key questions we get asked all the time. So Adam, that house that you sourced me, what do I do if my tenant doesn't pay the rent? Get angry at me. Yeah. So, honestly, it doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen. It's a big fear that landlords have. It's a massive fear. It's one of the reasons why some people don't do it at all. Correct. Um, Is there a chance your tenant won't pay their rent? Yep. We reference them really well. We tie them up in perfect paperwork. We like to think we've chosen the right tenant. But a good tenant can turn bad. They can lose their job. All sorts of things can happen. Of course Mm -hmm. it can. And they might not pay the rent. So there you go. That can happen. It happens very, very infrequently. And there's a reason it I say it happens infrequently for our tenants. Mm. There is a process we go through to make sure it doesn't happen. We have an incredibly low arrears rate. So the average arrears rate in all letting agencies, actually all letting agencies, which are the good ones, regulated and so on and so on, it's reported between 5 and 7%. I think the national average is a little bit higher, 12 or something. I've lifted the lids of acquisitions, property agencies who wanted to buy, and I've seen 20s. I heard, I, can't, I won't say names or anything, but I heard through an interview, you know, we're interviewing people for jobs, they work somewhere, and big national, and in one branch they had 40% arrears. Arrears, do you know what? That could worry you. I'm not worried about arrears, tenants not paying at all. We've got a very tight process, and any letting agency should have this tight process. If you DIY self-managing, you should have this process. First thing, sounds really obvious, but check the bank every day. How many DIY landlords check it once a week or not very often? If you call your tenant and say, you should have paid your rent last week, but you didn't, you're saying it's okay to be a week late. So check the bank every day. If they don't pay, call them on the telephone. Sounds really simple, but lots of people don't. Lots of letting agencies don't. When you're calling them, you're not calling for a chat or to point out the fact that they haven't paid the rent. They already know that. You're asking for payment. There you have some money and please pay it. I like to think, oh, we're not soft, soft, but we're not, we're not draconian um, we're landlords it's a double two-sided agreement and uh, we want to get paid for providing we provide a decent safe home so don't sort of write in the comments you greedy landlords we look after our tenants really really well but they need to pay the rent the process we run is starts all the way at the beginning decent safe home provide them a decent product they're going to be decent tenants mm-hmm. reference them well put them in with perfect paperwork so some of those bits of paperwork you can't do some of the next steps I'm about to talk about if you don't have the perfect paperwork you can't serve notice this is a topic for another video if you haven't got an EPC or a, if you haven't got the right electrical certificate or gas certificate and registered the deposit and proved it all now you can rail against that all you like it's only silly bureaucracy red tape paperwork but it stands you, know, you still can't evict them no matter how much you scream and, 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 and shout so do everything right then if they didn't pay notice chase them up ask for the payment we've got seven notices in seven days and the last one of those notice uh, notices is if they haven't responded and knock on the door because they might have gone that's another thing they might just have gone you know how many how many landlords waited a month to find out that actually they left 28 days ago seven days Seven contacts, we knocked on the door, you're still there, we serve on the seventh day a notice of intention, kind of a formal document, we're asking for payment, that usually does the trick, you know, bear in mind these are all things that we're doing, so we're narrowing the likelihood of this happening. In between the seventh day and the 28th day, so a further 21 days, uh, there's other contacts, we can't do so many, as a landlord you've got to be, well, you can't harass, um, if you went to, try to go to court and you've been harassing the tenant, so don't do that, it's not fair, Maybe they just lost a job. Maybe they're up against it somehow. Now, I'm not condoning that, but still, you've got to be realistic, a bit compassionate in places where, you know, but also tinge that with the fact that you don't, you know that quite often they're just chancing it off. So on the 28th day, we will always ask for possession. So we serve a section 8, 20, section 21, whatever it is. Don't worry about section 21 being abolished. Section 8 is fine. 21 would be, lots of the power in there would be put into eight. It's all fine. You're always going to be able to get a tenant out. The trick is to put a good one in in the beginning so you don't have these problems. We run a twin track process, which is getting possession, fast track, and also chasing arrears, which you can do separately. You can do a debt collection through separately, and you could end up in a CCJ for the tenant, unfortunately, and getting arrears. And if you do that, you'll have very, very few problems. Along every one of those stages, it's almost like a filter, you know, decent house, referencing, Decent paperwork, you're narrowing down your number of problems. Check up, be quick, be on the phone after the first day, your number, most most tenants pay. Seven days, most tenants pay without notice of intention. Even then, you go in for the full hog notice on the 28th day. Most tenants then, 
either pay in full or a part payment or you start to get some traction and they'll put a payment plan in place and you'll bring it down. Our arrears, by the way, go on, what's our arrears, mate? 0. Point I, I used to work, I used to say 0.5%, it's loads lower than that now. It's ridiculously low. People in the industry, if you listen to this, you don't believe me, do you? It's 0.5% arrears rate, and that's how you do it. That's the process. So what do I do if my tenant doesn't pay? That's a good question, and I think we've answered it well. It's not, will my tenant not pay? Who knows? You know, who knows? Human nature. Good tenant can turn bad. It's what you do about it if they don't pay that matters. Good? All right. All right. Thanks for answering my question. Yeah. <laughs> Bye for now. Cheers. Cheers.